Do you see his game growing by the week? I think so. I'm, I'm always... Um... I'm always sceptical in terms of seeing a player go from centre-back into central midfield and then thinking, what are they going to become? Because at the moment, he's, I think he's a really good Premier League holding midfield player. I think he's doing brilliantly for West Ham. I think he's hugely ahead of where he would be in terms of sort of expectation. Playing for England as well, he's obviously a really good type in terms of what his character and his, you know, his attitude, his work ethic. It's that, is he a good central midfield player in the Premier League? He's got somebody who actually plays alongside Mark Noble, who's had a great career in Premier League football, you know, 10, 12 years, has been a great performer. And then you've got what would be that, those lads he's just mentioned, I mean, Busquets is one of the great, great holding midfield players of all time. But he mentions Fernandino, he mentions Rodri, I'm sure he's looking at Fabinho at Liverpool, uh, Matic when he's been in his heyday at Chelsea. And to get up to that level, he's just got that little bit of a jump to make. Because I think it's difficult to be... You, you played at centre-back and then you went into midfield. No, I think it's the other way round. I think that's maybe something yeah, so, for him. But to be good enough on the ball as a midfield player at the top level... You were talking about England, World Cups, European Championships, Premier League. You know, Fabinho's absolutely sensational on the ball. Busquets is unbelievable on the ball. But is that, so, is that one of those but, positions that you do get better at with No, age? he will. He but, will get better, no he, doubt about that. He, he will do. Listen, this is the debate we had in the summer. There's no doubt in this country we produced that type of midfielder where I played. So I, I didn't actually play, for say, the full squad with England, but the under-21s, I was the holding midfield player. You could actually argue for, for England, would Harry Winks be better there? for England in terms of how they want to play. But in terms of the players like Fernandinho, um, Fernandinho, Rodri, Fabinho at Liverpool, he, they are more that type of players. Yes, they can still play. I thought his passing was outstanding at times. He played a pass in the second half. He drilled it across the pitch. There was one early on where it comes to he flicked one round the corner in the first half when he was... Pre we looked at Guendouzi getting pressed nice and he struggled at times. He actually did really well with one in the first half. And I actually think Declan Rice's passing is better to what he's actually given credit for. And, and I take what Gary's point in terms of the top level. I think at international level sometimes, and maybe European level, where it, it does feel a bit more technical. And that is something that you could argue. Would you rather have a Busquets type, listen, who's still brilliant at breaking things up, but actually, for, foreign countries sometimes look at a whole midfield player differently to the way we look at it. Now, we're talking about playing out from the back tonight and not going back to sort of 1980s, just knocking it long. And that's what foreign teams have been doing for years. But that is still probably one area where English, we look for something different. It, we see the holder as someone who breaks things up, Rather whereas a lot of foreign things. countries think they're going to start the attack from there it's, or start the possession. It's the ability of knowing where you are with your back to play, which is... I mean, I played the odd game in midfield and it was awful. Even when I was full-back and ended up in midfield just out of position sometimes and somebody plays a pass into you, you think, oh, what's behind me? You've got that feeling of like, you know, the great players, they know what's over the shoulders, they receive it on the half turn, they take the ball to the right side when there's a player coming from the other side, they've got that ability to do it. I think there's another player, a player at Manchester United, Scott McTominay, who's having that similar type of journey where there is no doubt these two players are... They're doing absolutely brilliantly. They're great lads. You can just tell they're great lads. But then you talk about measuring them against the great midfield players. When you played at Manchester United and Mike McTominay, Declan Rice playing at, in midfield, for, central midfield for England, playing in the European Championship. Do you think well. he should be playing for England in that position? I don't see why. Not. It depends what Gareth wants for it. You either play. I mean, you either play one that's basically stronger, who's a bit more solid. That's what I'm saying. Would you with, play with, with, or... with, with, with two with two in front? that are basically a bit more flair, or you play one that's a bit more on the ball, winks, with maybe a bit more solid in front, like Jordan Henderson, and maybe, I can't think who else it would be, but my, my point is with, the, with, with these players, I suppose in some ways, once you're at that level and you're playing for England, you're playing for Manchester United, it, it's not harsh for us to judge them at that level mm. with their contemporaries, which is Fabinho, it is with the best players in Europe, like Busquets, well, and then we're starting to talk about they've got a lot of development to do, and I think that they're, doing, they're, on, they're on track, so there's no sort of criticism here, it's whether they get that next jump up, which is the ability to receive the ball in tight situations, on the half turn, in the biggest matches, under the biggest pressure against the best players, and that's the jump they have to make and show us in this next 12 months. Matic is coming to the end at Manchester United, in my opinion. He's not of the quality of the ones you mentioned. Would you have Declan Rice in that position for Manchester United? I don't know. I mean, talk about 80, 90 million to get him out of West Ham. We've seen a bid for Zaha go to Everton this year of 70-odd million. To get players out of the likes of West Ham now, Crystal Palace, it's not going to be easy. So it's going to cost a fortune. So 
would I say yes now, 80 million, 90 million? I don't, I'm not feeling that personally at this moment in time, but am I seeing a really good player who could potentially develop into something fantastic for the next 10 years? Yes, I really do think that, but would I go and spend that much money on a player that potentially... Do Manchester United need another player? They've already got Matic, they've already got McTominay, who are doing a similar role to what I see Rice doing. He well, might what be... well, you answer that. What about 80-90 at Liverpool if he didn't have Fabinho? I wouldn't pay 90 billion for, for a holding midfield player. No, I wouldn't. But do I think Declan Rice is of the quality where eventually he's going, whether that's in, in 18 months or 12 months' time, where he could play for a team in the Champions League? I, I think he can. There's no doubt he still has to improve. He says that. Yes, he can get better in terms of his angles, receiving the ball off the back four. But I think in, a, in the Premier League, and let's not forget, I'm talking about international level, would you have Winks or Declan Rice? If you're a Premier League manager, you don't care what England do. It's, what's this fellow going to do in the Premier League for me, 38 games? I, I, each week, and I would, if I was a top four team and I was in Manchester United position and looking for that midfield, I'd have Declan Rice in that uh, holding midfield play. Obviously, the price I wouldn't pay 90 million for him, of course, I wouldn't. But if you're talking 50 million, that you might have to pay a little bit more. I, I, I think he can do a job for a Champions I, League team, yeah. And I think, I think tonight, in a year or two's time, what Declan Rice will be doing, he'll be looking at a game like that tonight and thinking. All right, I'm the holding midfield player. My job's predominantly to make sure that the tacks are broken up and I, I keep the tacks moving. But can he go and impact that game going forward? Can he say to Noble or whoever it might else be in midfield with him, you go back there, I'm going to make some runs into the box because he is a presence, he is someone who potentially could change the game. Fabinho sometimes, I think Fabinho at the moment is the best yeah. because what Fabinho does actually, he doesn't sit back in games. He's holding midfield player just plays horizontally like this. Passes sideways and plays that way when and they always shift that way like they're shuttling across. Fabinho plays vertically as well. He goes forward with his passes. He moves forward and steps in and wins the ball back. I think the best holding midfield players aren't just people who basically just shuffle across and make it look simple. They also step into the game as well. So for me, there's a lot of development for him too. But he's just said the right thing. He's watching the best players and developing and doing yeah, that. So that's a good thing. 